President Biden's allies are fighting back against the special counsel's report, raising new questions about his mental fitness. Meanwhile, Vice President Harris is saying she would be ready if needed. She told The Wall Street Journal, quote, I am ready to serve. There's no question about that. And that everyone who sees her on the job, quote, walks away fully aware of my capacity to lead. Maura Gillespie and Ashley Etienne join us now. Maura is a former advisor to Speaker Boehner and Congressman Kinzinger. And Adam, uh, Ashley is a CBS News political contributor and former communications director to Vice President Harris. Ashley, I want to start with you because it's not a surprise that the vice president made these remarks, which could apply to any vice president, but it's different given um, the president's health concerns, his age. What do you make of her comments here? And are, is there any concern that they could backfire if people don't want to vote for Harris for president? Well, I mean, here's the thing. A, I would start by saying there are no health concerns for the president. There, there's, there's, that's not proven. But here's the thing that the vice president said that she's ready to serve. I think the question, though, is, is the country ready for a woman in the top job every day on the trail? And this is the same question, by the way, being asked of Nikki Haley that's confronting her as well. And every day on the trail and every day in the job, she tries to sort of challenge that theory that America is ready to see a woman in the top job. I'm not so sure of it. But she actually is leaning in, and I think ways that really matter. I was just at the White House for the Black History Month uh, event, and the president talked about how she's been leading on an array of issues from reproductive rights to climate change, to her leaning in aggressively in foreign policy spaces, the the uh, war in uh, Israel and other um, uh, in China and other in Africa and other places all over the world. So she's really demonstrating her chops in terms of policies, in terms of her ability to galvanize constituencies that are important to the Democratic Party. But I think it just gets back to this question whether or not the, the country has a bias against a woman in this job. Well, Harris was fiercely critical of special counsel Robert Herr. Um, and you're right, I'm not a doctor, neither is her. But in this special counsel's report, he did lay out observations about the president's memory. Um, and I wonder, how concerned do you think the campaign should be over these details? And how do they fight against it? Well, I mean, there are many within the Democratic Party that are really saying, what do we expect? I mean, when we uh, when when um, uh, the attorney general appointed a Trump appointee who was a top lieutenant in his Department of Justice, what did we expect? We kind of expected at some point that he was going to use this as an opportunity to take shots at the president. It's you know, there's talk within the party that this is sort of a similar Jim Comey sort of a moment for the party right now. But I don't think that this is this is sort of hair on fire moment for the the campaign. This is a very manageable issue and problem for the pre president. You know, it's a matter of putting him in the right places and the spaces with the right formats to really show him uh, as a strong leader, really. Um, but here's the thing. You compare that to where Donald Trump is. His problems are only mounting. You know, he's going to be in court every day. Um, you know, there's no question. There's still questions out about he could actually be in jail by the time of the convention. Who knows? So I think when you compare the two, that Biden has a very manageable issue compared to Donald Trump, where we're not sure there's a level of uncertainty there that could really tank his chances. And Nora, despite what Ashley just laid out about the former president, he is still in the lead in South Carolina, where Nikki Haley is campaigning in her home state. Is there anything she can do to try to cut through that lead and, and win? I think what she's doing, you know, is hitting back on a lot of his comments. I'm glad that she's finally taking it to Donald Trump, the former president, uh, especially in regards to his comments about her husband and really firing up, hopefully, the veteran community and those who respect our, our men and women in, in uniform. I think by really targeting some of the things that he has said and some of the things that he has done um, and pointing them out and reminding voters who Donald Trump is and why it's time to move on from this to pass the torch to the next generation. And I think that really is a concern that a lot of people have, both, both with Biden and Trump, their age is a factor. Their mental acuity is a factor. Listen, being on television or giving speeches is tough. We all make mistakes and it can be nerve wracking, but we need the leader of our country to put out a strong uh, 
representation of our country. You need to be strong and forceful, and you're representing us on the world stage. Uh, you're leader, the leader of the free world, and we need someone who is in full command. Uh, and so I think, unfortunately, in, in this scenario, if Trump versus Biden is the ultimate two nominees here, uh, then we're the ones that lose. We, the American people, because neither Biden nor Trump are fit to serve as president. Uh, and, and I think that it's a shame for us that, that someone like Nikki Haley isn't going to get to the top spot. And I want to ask you about news of the day, because obviously we're tracking New York's um, third congressional mm -hmm. district to replace George Santos. Are you viewing that race as a bellwether weather in these critical swing areas in the country? Not exactly. I think it'll be an, an important for House Republicans to keep an eye on. Obviously, their majority is so thin. And with some of the things that they're trying to get done, uh, especially even tonight into tomorrow, it, th this does really matter. Because uh, again, it all comes down to being a numbers game. But I don't think that it's going to dictate what happens uh, on election day in 2024. Uh, I think with the border concerns, Swazi is you know, really hitting on that, trying to push back on some of the narratives that have come out against him. And you know, we'll see how that kind of shakes out for him. But it is an important, an important discussion. Uh, and I don't know that the Republicans are messaging it to the benefit that they could be, because at the end of the day, like, when it comes to what we should be encouraging, if we are trying to hold the Biden-Harris administration accountable for the failings of the border, the best way to do that is on Election Day. It is not by asking members of Congress to circumvent the Constitution and go against their oaths. That's not how we do that. We will be watching. Thank you so much, Maura Gillespie and Ashley Etienne.